It was on the 21st of February, 1901, that the thing finally occurred. As I look back across the years, I realize how unreal it seems, and sometimes half wonder if old Dr. Fenton was not right when he charged it all to my excited imagination. I recall that he listened with great kindness and patience when I told him, but afterward gave me a nerve powder and arranged for the half year's vacations on which I departed the next week. That fateful night, I was wildly agitated and perturbed, for despite the excellent care I received from Joe Slater, was unmistakably dying. Perhaps it was his mountain freedom that he missed, or perhaps the turmoil in his brain had grown too acute for his rather sluggish physique. But at all events, the flame of vitality flickered low in the decadent body. He was drowsy near the end, and as the darkness fell, he dropped off into a troubled sleep. I did not strap on the straitjacket as it was customary when he slept, since I saw that he was too feeble to be dangerous. Even if he woke in mental disorder once more before passing away. But I did place upon his head and mine the two ends of my cosmic quote-unquote radio, hoping against hope that a first and last message from the dream world to the, in the brief time remaining. In the cell with us was one nurse, a mediocre fellow who did not understand the purpose of the apparatus or think to inquire into my course. As the hours wore on, I saw his head droop awkwardly in sleep, but I did not disturb him. I myself, lulled by the rhythmical, rhythmical breathing of the healthy and dying man, must have nodded a little later. The sound of weird lyric melody was what aroused me. Chords, vibrations. And harmonic ecstasies echoed passionately on every hand, while on my ravished sight, burst the stupendous spectacle of ultimate beauty. Walls, columns, and architraves of living fire blazed effulgently around the spot where I seemed to float in air and extending upward to an infinitely high vaulted dome of indescribable splendor. Blending with this display of palatial magnificence, or rather supplanting it at times of kaleidoscopic rotation, were glimpses of wide plains and graceful valleys. High mountains and inviting grottoes, covered with every lovely attribute of scenery which my delighted eye could conceive of. It formed wholly of some glowing, erythral, plastic entity which. And consistency partook as much of spirit as of matter. As I gazed, my, I perceived that my own brain held the key to these enchanting metamorphoses for each vista which appeared to me. Was the one my changing mind most wished to behold. Amidst this Elysian realm, I dwelt not as a stranger, for each sight and sound was familiar to me, just as it had been for uncounted eons of eternity before, and would be for like eternities to come. <laughs> 